Today's episode of Digging the Crates is brought to you by Scratch Pro Audio, one of the UK's leading distributors and retailers of DJ and vinyl accessories, including brands like Innofader, Stokio, Zomo and Record Runner, the world's smallest portable record player. To find out more, go to scratchproaudio.co.uk. Digging the Crates. Digging the Crates. The Crates, y'all. Oh, come on, come on. Sometimes you gotta dig deep. Back as possible from town to town, dug deep in the crates where plates are found. This is Digging the Crates. I'm Vice Beats. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 2 of the podcast, brought to you by The Find. The podcast focuses on exploring the art, passion and culture of hip-hop going beyond the typical questioning and digging deeper into the passions, inspirations and experiences of those involved in the scene's rich culture, featuring artwork from Sick Film and intro music from Herma Puma and Jabba the Cup. This time, the graphics are an ode to 2002's Does Effects album, Dead Serious. This episode sees a duo who collectively and as solo artists define hip-hop in its truest form. Both artists in their own right have unique and unmistakable voices, alongside remaining true to their roots and supporting their scenes. First collaborating under their moniker in 2002, they returned 18 years later to present their fourth collaboration, Felt For You. This is Digging The Crates with Murs and Slug, aka Felt. And now for our feature presentation. All right, here, here we go. I'm Merce. And I'm Slug. And you're listening to Dig in the Crates. Advice Beats. Merce and Slug, a.k.a. Felt, welcome to Dig in the Crates. How you guys doing? Each. Cheers, we're good. Good, good. I just wanted to start by asking you, whether you remember the first time that you heard each other's music, and if so, when it was or what the track was? Yeah, I remember um, the, um, I don't even know the fucking name of the song, but it was on the Atmosphere Overcast EP on cassette. I was in the front seat of a RV driving across the nation, probably through Wisconsin, and uh, the, the Camaro Mobile Home song. What song is that, Sean? The song was called Primer. Primer. Primer, that's the first song I heard. I was sitting in the front seat looking out at cornfields. I remember that. We might have been heading back home, so it might have been Iowa. Cornfields, I'm going for Iowa. 1998, did I say that? 98. Yeah, that that makes sense. That totally makes sense. 1998, because you guys were on tour with Hyro. Yep. Ah, okay, cool. We met met when they were on that tour. They came through Minneapolis at a a bar called First Avenue, and... They played with Hyro, and we went down there. We, we we mobbed down. There was a lot of us that rolled that night, but I'm pretty sure that me and Idea both went out of our way to try to meet to meet everybody. You know what I'm saying? And I had met the I'd met the dudes in Hyro a few times already. Not all of them, but like you know, just in passing as they would come through Minneapolis because I was always going to all the shows and I was always trying to meet the rappers. I was that guy. I was one of those rappers. You know, yeah. it was always like, yo, yo, if you could just see that I'm nice. I'm nice with it, son. Take me on tour. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, I, 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 I kind of, I remember all that. You know, I, it's funny, Merce. I still have a record that Grouch autographed. I, I asked him to autograph a record for me for Jacob. And wow. he was like, and, you know, Grouch, he's like, who's Jacob? And I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's my kid. And he's like, oh, no, you're going to make me autograph this for your kid? Oh, that's cool, man. Like, everything he said sounded like he was mad, even when he wasn't mad. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, what about yourself, Slug? What, what was the first time that you heard Murs? Uh, I heard him get a tape called For Real. And also, uh, there was some tapes floating around. This was way back, way back in like the time, the times of like uh, 
ATAC uh, distribution and and uh, you know just different different like zine distribution spots where they would they, you could go online if you knew how to do that or the zines would float around and you could actually mail order underground tapes that you that the, that the record stores around the Midwest didn't have and uh, I had a roommate uh, he was a graph writer named Abuse uh, who. He was, he always knew about these, these different, you know, these different catalogs and whatnot. And, and he would order tapes and I would, I'd peep the tapes. Uh, and, and, and Merce Pharrell was one of the ones. Now most of us could waste a whole lifetime doing shit we don't believe in. So I'm retrieving words of gold to expose my soul on the sheets. Combined with a beat, a song, complete to compete. Nah, cause most of y'all won't understand it. Taking this existence for granted Never going after what you really want Cause you ain't got the heart So your life never starts to have meaning Feeding for something to fill that void Annoyed with the surroundings you pick Cause they don't seem to fit your person Rehearsing what they said would make you happy Until you realize one day Damn, they trapped me But who are they anyway To tell you how to live A college degree then a career The only decent way to raise kids but I disagree See I wasn't put here to make a living My living makes me So even if it takes me a lifetime I'ma write rhymes that I feel Some shit for when I'm fire That shit for when I'm chill And even if I never make that ticket to a meal I'll still be a success Cause my purpose will have been filled And then there was another tape That, that I had heard of Merce battling somebody Like for an hour straight on the okay. radio T Tearing some dude up And I always forget the dude's name And I know you probably remember who I'm talking Bro, about Bro, but the funny thing is Slug, last time you brought him up I hadn't brought him up that name in years That night, I signed on to Twitch And guess who was rapping on Twitch? Freestyling Oh, what's his name? <laughs> Drop it Insomniac, bro Insomniac man. Big up he's for Insomniac He's one of five rappers that freestyle on Twitch And just after you mentioned him I haven't seen him He's been on for a year and a half I've never seen him online And I was like I saw Insomniac rapping And I was like Who? I was like Couldn't be and I logged in And I was like Oh shit And I typed in the chat I was like Yo It's all part like, of the out, simulation bro It's all like, out, out, Brown mouth You <laughs> That was the best line of the whole battle. I'll go to the outhouse and leave you all with the brown mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, all I typed man. in the chat. I typed all I typed in the Twitch chat was outhouse brown mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh man, beautiful man. I subscribed to his channel and everything. That's the homie. That's, what's up. that's amazing. Yeah, that's how I, that's how I heard Merce. You know, and and he was the first living legend I heard. Uh, and then from there I heard Grouch, and then from there I heard Mystic Journeyman, and then, and then I became familiar with the whole crew. And, and it took about, you know, three weeks for that to occur. But Merce <laughs> was the first one. Where Merce was the first one I had heard. So when they, when I saw that they were touring with Hieroglyphics, I was like, this is crazy to me because they're both big families. They're, it's, it's in my mind at the time it was like legendary. Both, yeah. both stories, both of their, both of their situations. You know what I'm saying? And so to be able to go to that show and get love and give love you know what i'm saying like <laughs> i, I that, it, it's moments like that that made me feel like a, i was a star i was starstruck and i was a star i felt like way more a star back then when nobody knew who i was I <laughs> for real now i'm just at target you know and somebody's like hey i'm like oh how, how can you even tell i got a mask on dude <laughs> man leave me the fuck alone man I, don't tell nobody you saw me buying socks <laughs> Everyone has to buy socks, man. It's cool. <laughs> when when did you guys start talking about collaborating? Then, like, was do you do you feel like it naturally evolved, or was there a moment that you can remember when you thought we need to do something together? I think it was just like an idea that grew legs. Like you know, you you, you talk to somebody and you're like, oh, we should do this. Like, yeah, we should do that. And most of the time, one of you doesn't like do anything to make it happen. Sometimes neither of you. Do. But <laughs> yeah, I never thought about that. I think the result felt just a result of rappers say that shit all the time. Yeah, we should link up, and then we just happen to be the two guys that really follow up with me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, it's just like we did it. You know what I mean? Like so, so I don't know. It, it was natural, I guess. 
uh, in that regard. It was it was organic. It was natural. It, it happened as if it was meant to happen because it wasn't like a lot of a lot of a lot of concern had to be put into the concept of the idea. But the hardest part was just like you know buying the plane ticket, getting the getting the you know make finding the the window of time and space to be able to do it. I would say that goes for almost every single one of the projects we've released. Is like the hardest part of it is just the scheduling yeah, of, for sure. of, of being able to get together you know because once <laughs> we're together we just crack jokes a lot talk about real shit and then write some songs it's just like a normal day for me nice yes yeah, making time i think and a lot of it has to do with christina ricci like you know he made a song i made a song and you know, somebody told me he made a song and i don't, I don't remember it was a cell phone I, I remember that's another I remember being in the passenger side of somebody's car and like you know Slug has a song about Christina Ricci and I was like what I've been like rap friends with this guy this whole time and I didn't know we were best friends <laughs> you know like and that and my mind somewhere that clicked then like I gotta do work with this guy so I don't even think we had done a song yet and that just struck me I was like there's not many people that or I don't I don't want to put him in my category but I was obsessed you know you asked for it you got it and this is felt, felt, volume felt. 2 more slug is the group but felt is the fabric <laughs> Cause you know that ain't right I just refuse to be plastic for these rappers I don't like Well how do you manage to stay so polite? Anger management technique Developed out of spite Rather kill you with kindness Than kill you in a fight So why you wanna punch these other rappers in their face? Cause they fake as fuck And a waste of space Besides fists, not guns That's a change of pace So who are you to judge who's true these days? I've been around the block Got a few dudes paid One of the few rappers left That'll do what I say So is it death jucks Or the living legends that you rap? Man I'm all about good music People and progression I got friends in different sections But the West is where I rest Do you really think race is the reason you ain't selling? What you trying to piss me off and put an end to this session? Man, you heard this is for, come on Next all question all right. What was it like working with Humpty Hump? One hell of an artist, but a fucking drunk Though we did get the video cracking, I won't front You had a bunch of porn stars there Anything junk? Yeah, off into my lap for some head just once And I could've got some pussy, but I was too fucked up <laughs> After the first felt, did you meet Christina? No, she never said thanks, my black ass never seen that's why I moved on to my Nubian queen huh? So what's the definition of the 316? Huh? It's my birthday, fool 316 plus the formula for every rap song that you sing Where did firstly the name for Felt come from? But also, what did you feel like once you were in the same space That you felt like, right, okay, let's create an album? Or... Did you, was it very much a case of, here's a collection of songs, let's do something with it? We intended to make a project. We didn't know what we were gonna get out of it because we had never done it before. And that's the project that resulted as a Belt One, a tribute to Christina Ricci. But the intention was for me to go out there and record as many songs as possible. Because we wrote on the spot. We wrote at Mercer's townhouse at night we wrote and then the next day we go to Grouch's and record and, and then we go back and write and we wake up in the morning and write before and get as much done before you had to get to Grouch's and sometimes you're writing while Merce is in the booth I'm writing while, while I'm in the booth Merce is writing and so <laughs> we got as many songs as we could get and the ones that we thought were, were, were worth showing people you know what I'm saying we, 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 we put out you know uh, on that on that project the name I don't I don't know if there really is a story behind the name, Merce. Do you remember any anything? I think we just were trying to think about. You said you said it, and I said yeah. <laughs> My thing at the time was, you know, we both came from underground rap, and in underground rap, you had groups like the Living Legends, the Three Melancholy Gypsies. I was in the group called <laughs> Urban Atmosphere. So basically, what you do, you take a, a, a bag full of adjectives and a bag full of nouns, and make sure they're all weird words, and mix them up and pull out two words, and then you name your group after that shit. And so I was like, man, we need a name that doesn't sound like underground shit. It yeah, just is sure. like what, more like what? What is that? And not only that, but you can interpret it however the fuck you want. There's, it, you don't. When you hear the name Urban Atmosphere. 
like you're obviously you're like man that's a rap group and they, they probably they rhyme over the bar they don't they go too far there's too many syllables and shit you could probably consider all that just by hearing the name urban atmosphere you know what i'm saying or the name three melancholy gypsies you're like man these dudes are high you know what i'm saying it's just like whereas i think we we needed something that was like you couldn't you couldn't draw dotted lines around what it was, especially us at the time where we were going through different phases. Like I, I was listening to a lot of indie rock and, and, and you know, trying to understand a lot of stuff about like the other, the other weird bubbling youth cultures that were going on because it was all exciting to me. It was all, I was just seeing lots of, lots of movement and, and what I, and I was drawn to that. And I think, you know, when I got to know Merce, I saw he, and this dude liked the Deftones and shit, you know what I'm saying? And so I was just like, okay, that we, I don't want us to just be obvious. I don't want this to be obvious what it is. I want to give us a name that if we want to come back 20 years later wearing eyeliner and leather, we can, you know what I'm saying? So is that the direction for the fifth album? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I you're leaving the door it. open. That's, that's that's cool, man. <laughs> you said fifth album. At this trajectory, that would come out in 2027. And, like, is the planet even still going to be here? <laughs> yeah. Wait, no, I'm sorry. 2037 would be the fifth album if we did it right. Yeah, if we extrapolate on the, the, the um, mathematical formula that created carry, belt records. Carry the two. you were the magical elf I'm a collector of regrets and records I had the whole place to myself It was only right for you to come make my life better huh. We used to fight before sex And then we watched the television forever You fell asleep with your face on my neck I fell asleep with my hands on your treasure Ooh, the things that we used to do Before we had to wake up and take these dudes to school Remember when we escaped to Europe Trying to cover every inch with your maple syrup <laughs> For real, I'm like, whatever. I love this house that we've built together. I'm trying to holler at the South. Mama, won't you come and put your flower in my mouth? You guys have worked with, with a range of producers for, for the Felt Project as well. What made you choose to work with Ant again for the latest project? Man, I think it's what everybody wants. I did get one Snapchat message just yesterday. And some guy said, you guys need a new producer. Ant's beats are stale. <laughs> That what? is literally the first time in my life I have ever heard someone speak negatively of it. That's crazy. Well, you did have to go to Snapchat to get it. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> you yeah. have to dig deep. That guy has a valid opinion. Had There had to be one. I found the one. I, I think uh, Ant chose us. We had attempted to make Felt for a few times over the last few years. Just, and I just mean get the you know, the early stages run. And so there was a couple of times that we we collected beats from, from a producer and then it just didn't work out either due to scheduling or what have you. And then, and, and then another producer would start sending beats like, yo, I'm interested. And, and every time it was like, oh, it's on. This would be dope. We're gonna do it over this dude's beats, fresh. And it just didn't come together due to scheduling. That's always been our problem. And then, uh, but this time, Ant was like, man, if y'all ain't gonna make one, man, let me make it. Let me do this. I have an idea. I have a vision. I have, you know, he, he knew what the, the sound was that he wanted to go for. He was like, I know what you guys should rap over, you know? And so he kind of, he pushed it. And then we, and, and then, you know, we saw the schedules line up and we were able to multitask the situation. Like we got to record an album, but also, you know, Merce took a vacation and came to Minneapolis with his whole family and the families, they hang out, they kick it barbecue uh you know vegan sausages or whatever you know what i'm saying it's, it's just like a good time spent a spent a spent a, a week and a half in, in minneapolis in the summer i know like mers it's been been said in the past that you you and ninth used to record albums together and, and do that so that you'd be together for those patches of time and 
and record an album each time. I mean, do both of you prefer to do it so that, or do you exclusively do it where you only record, where you're in the room with with someone when it comes to albums or full projects? Always, except for in quarantine. I just did an EP for my Patreon with Recognize, but we've probably been on tour so long and we recorded an album, a couple projects together, so it was like he was there. But if it wasn't for quarantine, the plan was to fly to Miami and record it, so... I, ex- I, I try to be exclusive with you. Yeah, I like to go out in the rain, rain. Get involved in the conversation. Use the hashtag DTC Podcast. See, I'm a single black male, dark hair, dark eyes, long walks through a park, and a lot of them lies. I'm a little bit jaded by a lot of what I see, so if you're still interested, you should come get at me, because I'm tired of getting shot down, put down, and dissed. I want to be picked up, held tight, and kissed, but things like this don't happen to dudes like me, because I'm more cold play than I am iced tea. They say that good girls look bad guys, and that might be, but a bad girl with a good guy that's unlikely. So what's a man to do to get to hold hands with you? Do I talk shit and stand to look hard with my crew? I don't know what to do, so I drown in my drink. It helps to numb the pain, cause when I sit and think about it, eyes get clouded, thoughts get crowded. So I'ma sit right here and wait for you to talk about it. And I, come on, come on. I, I don't even think other producers really like me. You know, <laughs> I, I almost exclusively record with Anthony. I do, uh, I do a handful of collaborations where I, where where I'll do verses for other people. Uh, and when I do that, I'm not in the room with them. It's pretty rare, actually, just because I live in Minneapolis. It's not that easy for me to just like hop in an Uber and go make a song with somebody uh, outside of Minneapolis. In Minneapolis, you know, it, it's. It's, it's easier but even then I still I guess I still am kind of a recluse with it man I, I, I don't I don't leave the basement I make my music in the basement and so if, if you want to make it together you gotta you probably gotta come here yeah for sure no that makes you know, sense if, if I'm if I'm sending you a verse I'll, I, I have no problem emailing that I used to be against that I used to only make music with the person in the room. you know I'll, I'll do demos with you if we can make demos but when we actually get to sit down to make the, the actual album I, I would prefer to be in the Except for now, you know, especially with COVID. Yeah, for sure. I don't want to hang out with nobody. <laughs> I, I make my kids wear masks. <laughs> it's fair enough, man. You touched on on having a family. I mean, with your kids, do they listen to your music? And if so, what's their opinion on it? I make my kids memorize my shit, and then I make them perform it. And I got family over. When I like when my, when my my cousins or my uncles are over, I'm like, hey, 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 Malcolm, get up on the table. Do trying to find a balance. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Let's show and tell. It doesn't take much and that's messed up Because these people do a lot of simple shit to impress us While everyone was trying to outdo the last man I was just a ghost trying to catch some Miss Pac-Man Hello ma'am, would you be interested in some sexual positions and emotional investments? See, I'm not insane, in fact I'm kinda rational When I be asking, yo, where did all the passion go? East coast, west coast, down south, midwest Nowadays everybody knows how to get fresh Somebody give me a big yes God bless America, but she stole the beef from Bless Now I'm too fucked up to dance So I'ma sit with my hand down the front of my pants You can't achieve your goals if you don't take that chance So go pry open that trunk and get those amps In the days of kings and queens, I was a jester Treat me like a god or they treat me like a leper You see me move back and forth between both I'm trying to find a balance, I'm trying to build a balance In the days of kings and queens I was a jester, treat me like a god or they treat me like a leper You see me move back and forth between both, I'm trying to find a balance I'm trying to find a balance, I'm trying to build a balance Right now, yeah, my kids like my shit, um, yeah, if they don't like it I feel weird But um, yeah, they don't like requests, well not my, my two year old requests certain songs now for me um, but my, my, yeah, my eldest son, he'll request some songs. Yeah, my kids like my shit. 
for now. They're not, they're not old enough to have real taste in music, you know? Yeah, they like what they like, get. Kids like what they get. And they also like kids' music, you know? It's, it's like, what? You're, you're, you're four. Of course you like that song about the dragon. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what you should like. You know what I mean? Like, why would you listen to your dad rap about that? Uh, what I've learned with my oldest son and with Malcolm is that they reach a certain age where they become curious about wanting to hear your music without you being in the room. They want they want the freedom to, like, form an opinion on You, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, and at first, it's like, oh, man, my dad's pretty cool. Look, at he rhymed astral projections with gastral infections that was pretty bad <laughs> and, and then but eventually they, they get friends and they're like oh, my dad's all right but, I, but but this dude over here he can rhyme his ass off you know what i'm saying it's like eventually they <laughs> they, they, they they rebel because they have to you know what i'm saying and then and then eventually they're like oh that was cool you know i, I think they're i think if anything your, your children's relationship with your your work or your art or or your identity even is you know, it's gonna it's gonna ebb and flow uh, through, oh, over the years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that makes sense. Because your kids gotta go through a phase where they're teenagers, and you're just you're not cool to them. You could be cool to the rest of the world. Eventually, Drake's kid is gonna be a teenager, and that that <laughs> teenager is gonna be like, Nah, Dad, you're just not it. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. That eventually, that's that's just that's how kids get down. Hey, hey, what's up? This is Slug from Atmosphere. I'm feeling great. Listening to Digging Crates. Vice Beats. The fuck? The fuck? The fuck? The fuck? So, I mean, if you guys weren't involved in music, what do you think you'd be doing? I'd probably work in a record store. Yeah, I'm going to go for that one. Probably. <laughs> I mean, if I knew now, if I knew what I know, like if you were to like send me back to start over and let me have the information I have in my head, I'd be a tour bus driver okay. or I'd be a, I'd be a tour manager, you know, because for me, I love rapping and I love getting on stage and performing. I love writing songs and I love recording songs. I love cracking the code. I love, I love solving the puzzles of making music. I love it. But if you took it away from me, I also love traveling. I yeah. love, you know, seeing things. I love taking pictures of shit. I'm a tourist, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, I would still try to figure out a way to, to have a career that involves me, you know, getting in the van, getting on the bus, you know? So on that tip, I mean, where, cause I, I know, obviously like, I know you've had your own, own careers and your own rights, but where have you guys found has been the place that has kind of connected with your music the most over the years? Has there, has there been a certain country or a certain community where you, you feel the most connected to or they seem to really feel your music the most? I think for me, it ebbs and flows. I, can, I don't know about Sean, but like for, for the most part, I can have three only three amazing shows somewhere before it's like I start expecting it to like, oh, Omaha was amazing. The next time I go, Omaha was amazing. And then I go, Omaha's the shit. And I get back to Omaha's the shit. And then the fourth time, it'll be like, ah... Uh, not that it's the crowd or anything. I think it's just like you get. I get. I got too hyped up on one place. So I, it ebbs and flows when you pay attention to the cities. I think. To me, it's like we're all just one massive community. I just because you know cities differ, but it's, that's more like what you do before and after the show. In the room are usually like-minded individuals, and thanks to the internet and whatever fuck what was that shit called Karma Loop. Yeah. Like and merch like we're all pre basically dressed the same if we're gra especially since our music has a message if i made like pop music you don't know who's gonna show up you know there could be people from all walks of life but we're i'm pretty you know there's this genre specific people they're just you know what i mean so i think it's just we're, we're just our, our people we're us and everywhere we go there's us whether they have a, a, a british accent a welsh accent a you know a australian accent a they, you know, whether they speak German, it's still us. I feel like I can have a drink or a smoke or whatever with anyone in the room. Yeah. So I think it, it's all just yeah. But um, but for me, like crazy shows, like it's definitely have to have to be in California. I think that's where my music resonates the most. Oh uh, yeah, that sounds good. I would definitely co-sign that. California is like like the way that they received Anthony and myself 
even from the very beginning, you know, the first couple of times that I showed up in California with idea and ability, um, the type of, I mean, the, the, the type, the type of love that they gave, it just reinforced the whole thing to me. Like, I don't know that I, I, I don't know that I would even, I don't know what would have happened to me if California not happened to me. And with that said, though, that's one thing. But the other thing is, uh, the place where I see the most love sometimes is the smaller town. When you show up someplace that, and they're like, yo, you know, not a lot of people show up to come here, but you do. And so the connection they have with you specifically, because you didn't make them drive five hours to come see a show, you know, yeah, that, that's, really? that connection is huge, you know? And then my city, you know, Minneapolis, for I'm better for worse. Get, I'm trying to get Slug to come to Bakersfield with me for that reason to this day. I need to go back to Bakersfield. I used to go to Bakersfield, and then uh, I believe they closed down the place that we always Yeah, they used to closed down at. Fish Lips. Yep, the, that's the boxing ring, right? I think so. No, 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 no. That, but I know I know what you're talking about. But yeah, I think that place is closed as well. I used to play the boxing ring. And, uh, oh, that's amazing. I went away, and then nobody booked us. They just were like, no, we don't want you. They told, they told Merce, they said, hey, bring Slug. And I'm like, oh, worry, we can come back? And they're like, yep, we want you to come back. <laughs> you know, I love anywhere, though, man. I'll go anywhere and make a friend, you know what I'm saying? Especially because I know I get to go home. Man. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to deal with it. And yes, yeah, so UK definitely fucking Cardiff blew my mind, man. I had a great, one of the best shows of my life in Cardiff. Man, I've never been to Cardiff. I wanted it was like, I thought it was like eight people. I got a photo. It was 20 people, but it was the 20 best people I almost ever met in my life. <laughs> we, fucking, we went off, bro. And it was, and I was on crutches. Oh, damn. That's recent. That's but, crazy. So if you, I mean, you guys have worked with and, and played live with so many artists over time. Like which which artist would you choose to support live if you could? On tour? Yeah. Like open up for? Yeah, Merce. yeah. I want to go on tour with Merce. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm serious. Like, like I'm I'm missing that. I'm, yeah. That's supposed to be a part of that's supposed to be a part of my life right now. Like that's I like I I can feel the, the void. Yeah, that must that must be a crazy feeling with with everything just shutting down, especially with such a a waited for project. I'd love yeah, to go out and run the jewels too. I feel like that would be an insane experience to see old friends just murder fucking arenas. Are you, <laughs> you, know, you know how that would just warm my fucking heart just to see that, like just a, on a regular basis. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of shit I would love to go out with. I'd love to go on tour with Cool Key. You know what I'm saying? I'd love I would love a perfect kind of like tour of like uh, I don't know the. Shit that would draw from different places. So, like, you know, atmosphere, cool Keith, some drill, you know what I'm saying? It's some of this, some of that. Like the old Fresh Fests where it's just like, oh, yeah. you get a little bit of the... You had Houdini on tour at Run DMC. Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? At the time, those things were so polar fucking opposites. Houdini was for old people. That's like me. You know what I'm saying? And then Run DMC was like the hype drill shit at the time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, you know, I'd second Slug's emotion. It would have been nice to do a, a felt tour. Um, man, I, you know, I like. I, I might like to go on tour with Dell. Can't go. go can think of anyone else. Then I, I think I've done all the tours I'd like to do with people. Okay, that sounds good. Yo, I want to go on tour with Cypress Hill. <laughs> that would be Aggie. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. That those guys are a hoot. Yeah, for sure. a lot of marijuana on that tour. I'm saying, okay. <laughs> you see where I'm coming from? Like, shit, man. And fucking beats. You know what I'm saying? The fucking dark ass beats and weed. Uh, fucking. I, I will get. I will buy a bong in Colorado with a skull. <laughs> real, <laughs> in Boulder, I will go buy a fucking bong with a skull. In Boulder. Yeah, man. <laughs> Motherfucking Parliament, George Clinton. Let me go out and open up for fucking parliament every night. I will fucking fight my way through it too. And you know what? Most of them people won't like me. Don't matter. I'm not here for that. I'm just here for the fucking party. Party. Let's, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. For that, like I go on tour with Erica Badu. Oh, Hell yeah. yeah. The Foodies reunion. And what's the new there's a new guy, um, forget his name. Sada Baby, Sada Baby. Um, he's like a he does a whole song called Whole Lot of Choppers. 
but uh, oh man he has a guy named FBA fucking Pac-Man they are the funniest most fun trap rappers I've ever heard in my life I will go on tour with them just to see the antics that ensue <laughs> like he, he had in the video the gay, kid wears a video a shirt that says I'm still HIV positive oh no <laughs> <laughs> oh man bro he they are clowns bro they're clowns that's crazy them and Riff Raff no, Riff Raff has one of the best life for that would be amazing what, did, what happened to Riff Raff he went into wrestling and, and, and did he come back yet no he didn't come back yet I don't know where he is I think he's in Arizona I don't know why I thought he was in New Orleans or some shit. Yeah, he went down to Phoenix, and then I don't know. But, you know, a lot of people go to rehab in Arizona, so maybe he got clean. I don't know. I don't, I don't watch his Instagram enough. But uh, I don't like to see him unless he's rapping or performing, because he's definitely a performance artist. He did a song at a, I booked a show called uh, the Sunset Strip Music Festival, and they let me have a rap stage, and I booked just, like, Killer Mike, Riff Raff, DJ Quick. It was, like, just shit that I want to see no tickets in mind he did a song there was a lady backstage the whole night that I thought I was kicking people out constantly because LA and it's Hollywood and people kept being entitled and so I just had the, the illest security team I'm like them out them out them out but there was one woman just by the concessions an older black woman looked about 45 I was like she can stay so that's somebody's auntie waiting for her nephew to go rap Riff Raff performs and in the middle of his set he sits down and I was upset with Riff Raff because he came with the I don't know if you've seen his grill it looks like Jaws from James Bond with like yeah. the turquoise and pink diamonds yeah. so he came with that and he, you know he knew who I was he's like hey man Merce. he said, like, what's up Merce? I know you rich from all these concerts bro nice to meet you and then got on stage but his hair wasn't done His rain, he had rainbow hair I think pre Takashi but it wasn't braided his braids are always the best and I was like what the fuck man you cheated me I feel like I should get $5,000 off your guarantee <laughs> then he did a song and he pulled out a seat and he sat down and then he called the lady I forget her name she proceeded to braid his hair what? during the show wow that's crazy put down the mic he didn't <laughs> rap at all he just let the song play and straight ass held the mic while the lady braided his hair. And in five minutes, she had the best braids I've ever seen in my life. And then he went back to rapping like nothing happened. I was yeah. like, this guy is a brilliant wow. genius. Wow. <laughs> wow. I love there it. Two hours before on the side of the stage waiting. And I think she just has to mentally prep to do that type of magic. That's crazy. Yeah, in front of people too. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a, you're on stage. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, like that's not just you're not in the salon or whatever. You know, you're on stage with fucking <laughs> strangers and shit. Like, man, that's beautiful. That's crazy. So now I definitely want to tour riff rap. Yeah, man, I want to play with riff rap. <laughs> I want to tour riff rap, man. I don't even rap. <laughs> you know, I don't think you have to with him. That's, that's not crazy. a requirement. Just, just stare at him getting his hair braided. That's it. Yeah. You can hold home those comb. Man, there, there's there's surely like room for him to be selling his own brand of like hair products based off that. I mean that's uh... <laughs> Shit, spit blade just to keep 
keep the matches lit They say I'm half insane, the other half immaculate Could you imagine it? Whatever, I don't like to shoot Cause I'm just way too accurate When they be at you, they don't ever at you That's the wack of shit And ain't too many bitches that can hang or even match my wits I mean, I've had it up to here I'm talking atmosphere Cause I don't even talk to them They say I'm too cavalier I'm like your greatest living fear When I twist the gears Give me props, I ain't have to drop a bitch in several years I look at OG is my only peer So let me know when you done playing in the snow The slopes for real skiers I'm dropping real tears from laughing at you weirdos Drag your little by your earlobes Number one stunner, stone cold below zero Too dope, I'ma need more than one kilo <laughs> Or a Krylon, I spray all my style on Mine brighter than them orange end zone pylons Two hands from the zebra man Instant replay says the play on the field stands I pack the stands with my stanzas My stands go bananas, it's a bona fide bonanza Word to Jason Alexander Custom model of the culture could have cussed out Costanza Fuck Trump and fuck cancer Fans raise their hands but they ain't got the answers no performance enhancer, six rings, piss clean, I ain't taking no chances. Who else could dance with the devil? Samba with the mamba, Macarena with your mama. Fuck a double entendre, put it plain till I leave this plane, I'm a problem. What's your, your own music collections like? I mean, are you are you guys moving in, into more of a digital age or are you more on physical still with like vinyls or tapes or CDs or anything like that? And, and also to the other side of this as well, like you were, we were talking about kids earlier and so on. Are there any pieces of music that you used to play when you were growing up that you're finding that you're digging out, kind of remembering that stuff now that they're around? I, pl- I, pl- I collect vinyl. Uh, I have a... I have a good amount of records. Uh, I still buy new vinyl as well as old vinyl. Um, I try to buy, I, I try to purchase at least a new album from a new artist monthly. And often it's outside of hip hop. Often it's not. Often it is hip hop. You know, it just kind of depends on what I'm in the mood for when I decide to go spend that that thirty dollars. Yeah. Um, as far as with my kids, though, uh, I tend to bust out my 45s for them because I can let them play them and they won't ruin them. You know, 45s are kind of durable. They <laughs> yeah. make them take a beating. And also, you can replace them when they're just, you know, the fucking pop hits from the 80s, which is really what I pull out. Some hollow notes or Survivor, Eye of the Tiger, <laughs> fucking Tears for Fears or, you know, Rapper's Delight. You know, it's it's like, it's the records that kids should hear. Yeah. If you were a kid in the 80s, because I'm stuck in the fucking 80s, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't even know what the record, what am I supposed to play on my, my, Miley Cyrus? Does she even make 45s? What do I play for the, for a <laughs> six-year-old now? I don't fucking know what these kids, you know, a wrecking ball, was that that song? <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. It was. Uh, I, you know what, though? The two-year-old wants to hear who let the dogs out, and I don't even have that vinyl. So that's next on my list. Uh, I'm going to find... Who let the dogs out by the is it the Baja men or the Baja boys? I can't remember. Bro, can I blow your mind on this, bro? What's good? I thought that that was the worst song ever made by humans. <laughs> but then someone flipped it on me. Do you know that that song's about ugly girls? Really? Yes. And so now you like it? No, I just thought, oh, at least there's another <laughs> layer of creativity to it. It can't be sure. the worst song because some thought went into it. Who let the dogs out? And who let the ugly oh, girls in the club? Oh. oh man, that's just. It's not that's great. Just, Does, that's doesn't fucking mean. Yeah. <laughs> fucking like, bullies, the Baja bullies. The Baja. <laughs> <laughs> man, assholes. All right, well, I here I can I can honestly genuinely at least say that my two year old does not equate it with ugly women. All right. <laughs> He equates it with actual fucking dogs because he he dances, he barks, he does all that shit when you play that song. You know what I'm saying? And all the kids go through that. But what do I try to get them to like? I try to get them to like Prince. I try to get them to like, uh, you know, the hits of the 80s. You know what I'm saying? Uh, The stuff that I heard when I was 10 that made me connect with music. Yeah, for sure. 
I think I think all parents do that. You know, that's why. And I had to hear Parliament, and I had to hear all that shit when I was six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. Uh, and but I didn't want to hear that shit. That was my dad's music. It was for old people. I wanted to hear when Rapper's Delight happened. I was like, this is for me. Wait, why does my dad like it? That's not fair. You know what I'm saying? Then when Run DMC happened, I was like, okay, dad, no. He thought that shit was noise. That's how I knew I wanted to be in Run DMC. And, but now as an adult, if you, you could put on any fucking Earth, Wind and Fire record, you pick any of the fucking 500 records they got and put it on. And I'm like, oh yeah, that song. And I can sing along. And I'm like, how do I know the words to this shit? I don't even, be, I don't even like know how I know it, but I know it. You know, same with Stevie, you know, uh, Parliament, you know, so you play that stuff for the kids so that when they get to be in their 20s, they are eclectic. And they have they have a little bit more game. <laughs> <laughs> what you, hey, what you mean you don't know Tears for Fears? What about, what about <laughs> George Michael? What you know about me? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I was just wondering, out of your own music, so Slug, what, what track of Murs is, is your favorite track and vice versa for you, Murs, with Slug? Do you guys have a favorite of each other's or a favorite verse? My favorite song by Murs is Murs Rules the World. But it's it's because the chorus is just one bar. This shit's genius to me. It, it's, he's got a one bar chorus that just keeps coming back. And every time it comes, that was the part that people knew. So that was the hook, you know what I'm saying? So every time you said Merce rules the world, that was the hook, you know what I mean? And so I always was like, man, I'm over here trying to write fucking eight bar choruses like a fucking underground rapper. And this dude has got a one bar <laughs> chorus that slays. Like, man, that changed a lot of my perspective on shit. Touring, touring, touring and having to hear that fucking song every night. What up, though? 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 You could dig in the crates with Vice Beats. Guess what? Merce rules Everything the world. you touch and see, not a portion or a smidgen. The whole fucking world is under my jurisdictions. No restrictions, my volition. From the way I rock the mic, you might have had the suspicion that Merce rules the My world. new composition, athlete titles, smacking rivals, rap revival, tapping spinal, snatch the vinyl, cause it's spinnable. And pack with your essential. Hip hop minerals, a lifetime criminal. I have to steal the show when the energy is minimal. An asshole, cynical, original with syllable. Analog to digital. Accumulate residuals, stimulating visuals, and demonstrate within my flow that verse rules the world. As far as verses go, though, like, I mean, the whole uh, 24 with a G song was dope. Um, I like the verses too well. I, you know, he's got a new song called Holy Sh- or I, I, it's not called Holy Shit. I don't know. That's what, I, that, that's what I hear in my head when I heard your new song. Uh, what's that song you got, Merce? The sex song that just came out about you and some like. Oh, you listen to that? Bro, I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, you get to make this in 2020? <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> oh my God, you're fucking woke. <laughs> that shit was good, dude. That song, that song was great because it reminded me of like just fucking rap bro <laughs> it's just fucking rap like cool g rap is somewhere in this motherfucker talk shit <laughs> yo anyway anyway uh he's got a, he's got a lot of he's got a lot of really great verses but merce rules the world was a big one to me but also i mean the timing of it it wasn't even just because he's written way better songs like don't get me wrong i'm not dissing that song he's a fucking he's an amazing writer and that song was great but it wasn't the writing about it that made it great to me. It was the impact. It was the way the beat built. It had a really good energetic beat, but it was still minimal. Like that's that's how you make an anthem. When you got some shit that's minimal with energy, and then that fucking one oh, one bar hook, man. Fuck that. So yeah. <laughs> go figure. Go figure. I'm gonna say some shit you probably made 20 years ago. I'm sorry, bro. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> But at least you listen to the new Late Night Lobo. That's crazy. I didn't Late even... Night Lobo. That's the joint. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's the joint, dude. That song's great, dude. I tweeted that shit, man. I was like, look at this. Come on. Come on. Let us rap. <laughs> let us rap. Let us be free to rap. Oh, man. I mean, my first joint, like, I loved. By, like, Primer was amazing to me. Um, Scapegoat. 
um, God's bathroom floor, but like that was before I got to know him. And then once I got to know him, Sunshine, man, it reminds yeah, yeah. me of. I feel like you wrote this around the time where we where you live where you were living with Rita. What street was that on? On Garfield. Garfield, yeah. And just waking up in the morning in that apartment and smoking cigarettes, like this is reminded. <laughs> But it's also great because it's the first time I'm um, scared, funny th- trio, scared, atmosphere, and Drake are three artists I've seen, and Drake only via video, perform a song that no one's heard before and make people love it. Um, and, and I guess if I throw myself in there, LA when we did it at Pay Dues, but like repeatedly, like people get to know the song through doing it every... Sunshine wasn't out when we did Pay Dues the tour, right? No, nope, wasn't out yet. And it, we headlined a festival as felt, and he would do this song. He had a, a myriad of hits he could have plugged in because we only had a 45 minute set, but he chose to do the song every day, and it went on to be the biggest song. I think like, it's the most streamed song. You know what I mean? But oh yeah, I would say I would say that's our biggest. Gym. To stand with both feet on a song that has no video that no one's ever heard, and be like, "This is it," because I know it's it, and you know it's it. As soon as you hear it, I knew it was it when I was learning the ad libs. It, it was I've never seen a song grow like that, and been you know I got to be a part of that because I was doing the backgrounds, you know, and I couldn't really do the backgrounds because I didn't really know it because I didn't hadn't heard it. <laughs> I was just like, "Yo, just get the just do the sunshine, sunshine part." I yeah. got the rest. <laughs> <laughs> and it went off every time time and it's it was in performing that song sunshine on a summer festival like i'll never forget that like that's in trend, like it's memory um it, yeah but between the lines probably my favorite song is that, that that the one on lucy ford yeah yeah oh my god there's not a there's not a um, you know it's top 10 rap songs of all time for me um but yeah like and then yeah i, I mean we could go down the list man there's so many um that's why it's always such a pleasure to do felt because it's a group that i'm a fan of like you know atmosphere is one of the greatest rap groups of all time so it's i feel like when Ant, especially when ant produces it i don't like to say like i could have said hey how about ant does all the felt records but that kills sean's chance to work with someone else the fans chance to hear slug work with someone else but for me as a fan it's my chance to be of atmosphere and in atmosphere yeah. when we work with Ant. It's my chance to be in Run DMC for a fucking album, you know. And I got, I've gotten to do that twice in my career, and, um, and it's, a, it's a privilege and a blessing. Summer, summer sun, feel it in my skin, warming up my mind. Sometimes you gotta give in to win. I love the days when it shines, rolling it shine. Sunshine, sunshine is fine. I feel it in my skin, warming up my mind. Sometimes you gotta give in to win. I love the days when it shines, rolling it shine. Oh, let it shine. Oh, let it shine. Oh, let it shine. Oh, let it. Just, uh, just for the record, just to fill in the blank here for you, Sunshine was written. Uh, we moved into this house. It was brand new. The house was brand new. It's not. It's not from Garfield Avenue. It's not from that far back. It was actually from. Wow. Uh, it was from like the spring before the Paid Deuce Festival. And it's a literal true story because, you know, the proximity of where I live to where Aunt used to live, it was a five minute car ride by bike, you know, 15 minutes. And I was supposed to go to Aunt's house on Sundays to make music. And I was super hungover and was like, I can't even drive. Right no, that's right. You know, I associate that house with family, but you guys were still living like fucking. Oh, yeah, we were still oh, we were in that house. Yeah, I had a yeah, room yeah. in that house. I forget. You, yeah, there was a merch room. Yeah, we, that was a, when, when I got that house, that was like that was a, our version of a punk rock house. Like People came <laughs> and went. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was like, cause yeah, it was it was pre kids. Uh, and boy, boy, oh, boy, our neighbors were happy that we started having kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that real, is, they're like, we're like, wait, what the hell is going on over there? How many people are in there right now? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, because yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, and you know, and and, and I got to give Ant the credit for that because he is the reason we were performing that song on that festival. He was like, man, you have to do the song, you know. But but also the, I don't know if you remember, but the the EP came out like right at the end of the festival. That, that was on so it was it was it was coming out it might have even been like the last couple of days we might have gotten a, a drop shipment of the cds and the vinyl while on that festival because i remember we were on it and i was playing it remember grouch had the 
he was touring in the pickup truck that was burning vegetable oil. Yeah. Okay. And so on one of the drives, I kicked it with them and did the drive with them. Uh, it was a short drive. I can't remember. Probably some uncapped. And uh, and I played it for them, and they were just like, "What is this?" You know. And I was like, <laughs> "Oh," because it was it had stuff on it that was with the live band. And, I, and, and, and it was the beginning of anybody getting to hear that shit of, the, of, of what we did. So that EP had like five songs on it and, and the live band played on all of them. And, he, and I, I was like, man, I don't know if people are gonna like this. I don't know what they're gonna expect, whatever. And I played that for Grouch and them and, and didn't tell them it was a live band just to see if they'd be like, what is this? You know what I'm saying? And they, and they, I mean, he said, what is this? But well, not of course, negative. Of course. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. But, 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 uh, but you know, they, they, they appreciated it and that gave me you know that gave me that made me feel less afraid of what we were about to get into as we started dropping all the music with the live instruments you know because that was the beginning of that well Merz Slug thank you so much for taking the time to to come on Digging the Crates and it's, it's been amazing hearing how some of these songs have come about and the Felt Project and of course kind of your journey together as musicians and I, I wish you the best of luck and hopefully hear, uh, hear another Felt album in, in 59,000 years and uh, looking forward to it, man. But yeah, uh, thank, thank you so much and uh, thanks, for, thanks for everything you guys contribute to music and continue to. Vice Beats, thank you for having us on here, man. It's an honor to be on Digging the Crates. Thanks, man. It's, 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 it's special. Shout out to all your listeners. And yes. remember, everybody, key phrases don't hang up. at the Dodger game two fingers in the air when they call my name hard to change when it is what it is I only do it for my city and my kids don't really matter how much you got now don't really matter now the doors don't lock if the cops don't knock now it's leveling up but it's never enough and here you come with your nose turned up with your head in the clouds like you're better than us don't really matter how much you got now it's leveling up but it's never enough Looking over your shoulder like people don't change They just go sober and this goes to those that didn't get to get older now Love me like it's only gonna get colder now Live in the flesh, it's the voice that the ice reflects Got me checking on the time that's left Every choice ain't a life or death But let's avoid the stress and let the flights connect Staring up at the planets Thinking back to when they didn't fuck with the bandit But everything stands in the spot it's supposed to That's why we never got up off the roller coaster She got me underneath her ass and tits And ain't neither of us fixed So we having these kids That's why I gotta keep some work Got me standing on the corner trying to sling these shirts Don't really matter how much you got now Don't really matter now The doors don't lock if the cops don't knock now Level it up but it's never enough And here you come with your nose turned up With your head in the clouds like you're better than us Don't really matter how much you got now Level it up but it's never enough Don't really matter how much you got now Don't really matter now The doors don't lock if the cops don't knock now Level it up but it's never enough And here you come with your nose turned up With your head in the clouds like you're better than us To find out more about each episode, including the tracks played, go to thefinemag.com.